But since it's probably more likely that it, that you can see Qumran from here, I'm going to do some pointing up here on the uh, Поскольку мы будем Qumran здесь изучать, поэтому буду здесь показывать все на фотографиях. Uh, as you can see, there is a cave right here. Видите, пещера там. And there is another cave right here. Еще одна пещера. Uh, neither one of these caves were, uh, did they find any scrolls. Они не нашли никаких свитков в этих пещерах. Uh, where the scrolls are, are is actually up here. Но свитки были в той пещере вверху. For cave number 11. В одиннадцатой. But these are taken down here, and, and we discussed before about this plant where you could eat, eat uh, the salt off of the leaves. Это то растение, о котором мы говорили, это соленое растение. So the actual uh, up up here вот здесь находится эта пещера. is cave number eleven. So you have to go up this way. Поэтому так нужно подняться. And then up this way. Вот так. Across this way. Сюда. Up here. Вверх. Up here. Вверх. Across. Up into here, and then back this way to get into here where there's a cave. Направо в эту пещеру. And it's pretty dangerous. И достаточно это все опасно. You can't tell from this picture how high up it is, but it's pretty high. А, да. На картинке на фотографии не видно, насколько это высоко, но там довольно такая выс большая высота. Maybe this picture will help you to understand that it's it's pretty high up to get up there. И, возможно, по этой картинке вы поймете, насколько это высоко. So it's it's way way up here. Это там далеко. So далеко. it's it's no small little. Uh, jump to go up there. I'm about to eat some leaves here. Uh, because it's so hot here in this area that um, I need to eat some of these leaves to, uh, before I get started uh, so I don't uh, dehydrate. Я должен был есть эти листья, чтобы вообще как бы у меня не было проблем с иссушением организма. This is going to cave number three here, which is up in this area. So each one of these uh, caves, different things were found in. I'm going to tell you, um, uh, as we go to different cave areas, way up in here is another cave. Uh, and w these are caves that we, we went up to and went inside. You know what's in these caves now? И когда мы пошли в те пещеры, знаете, что сейчас там находится? Nothing. Ничего. Because <laughs> we got everything out of there. Потому что все оттуда уже вынесли. There's nothing left. Ничего не осталось. In 1947 was when the first uh, cave was discovered by a shepherd boy. В 47 году первую пещеру обнаружил пастушок, маленький мальчик. He was uh, looking for a goat. Он искал козла своего. That was missing. Который пропал. And uh, he uh, just threw a rock over into uh, uh, a top window of a cave. And he heard the sound of the rock hitting something that sounded like pottery. So the boy wondered what it was. And climbed up there and found he the first time he found uh, ten jars. And in eight of those jars they were empty. And uh, one of them was full of just earth, dirt. But one of them had three scrolls in it. А в одном кувшине было три свитка. The complete book of Isaiah. Полностью вся книга Исаи. Completely, complete. Полностью. Where you could read the entire book without any deterioration. Полностью всю книгу можно прочитать без всяких изменений. As we look at the scroll that you are making, you'll you'll notice there's deterioration. Как вы тот свиток, что вы делаете, вы видите, что там есть он поврежден вообще. On the war scroll. Военный свиток. Sometimes called the uh, scroll of sons of light and sons of darkness. Или свиток сынов света, сынов тьмы. I want to explain to you why it is important to understand the different scrolls that are not biblical scrolls that were found in these caves as well. Я хочу объяснить, почему важно понимать также эти свитки, которые были найдены в пещерах, но которых нету в Библии. 
but also in that that first what they called later on started calling it cave number one и позже как они потом начали называть эту пещеру номер один they didn't start calling it cave number one until they found other things in caves nearby поскольку они не называли эту пещеру первой поскольку еще не найдены были остальные пещеры And of course there came a cave number two, a cave number three, all the way up to cave number eleven. Конечно, потом нашли вторую пещеру, третью и вплоть до одиннадцатой. And what's so important is that before this time they had scrolls that were about eight hundred years old. И что очень важно, что до того времени были у них свитки, но которым насчитывалось восемьсот лет. But this was the first time to discover scrolls that were two. Это впервые они нашли свитки, которым две тысячи лет и больше. So it was an unbelievable find. Поэтому это была невероятная находка. And there has been no find since then like this find. И подобных находок с тех пор больше не было. So you can imagine how excited people became when this was found. Представьте только себе, насколько люди обрадовались, когда нашли свитки. Also in that same uh, jar. Также в том же свит, в том же кувшине. The uh, community roll scroll was found. Uh, был найден свиток общины. Uh, the community roll scroll tells what the people in in this area were following. Uh, в свитке общины описано uh, традиции, обычаи uh, людей той деревни, той области. The rules and regulations to serving God. Правила и постановления в соответствии с которыми служить Богу. As a community. В качестве общины, как община. So now this is a very, very important find. Поэтому это очень-очень важная находка. Because now, because of this scroll, not only do we know what we found, but we know who the people are, who, who were the scribes. Мы не только знаем, что что мы нашли, но кто кто был книжником, кто записал все это. And then we also found a commentary on the book of Habakkuk. И также нашли там комментарии на книгу Авакума. Это очень важно, поскольку там все описано в подробностях их верования, их понимания книги Авакума 2000 лет назад. Это было совсем незадолго до времен Иисуса. И затем пару дней спустя. These this young man went and got his brother and a friend. Этот мальчик пошел, взял своего брата, своего друга. And they went back to the cave. Возвратились в пещеру. And they found another copy of the book of Isaiah. И они нашли еще одну копию книги Исаи. They found the war scroll, which is the one you're working on. Нашли военный свиток, над которым вы работаете сейчас. And they found the Thanksgiving scroll. И также свиток благодарения. And they found the Genesis Apocrypha. Также апокриф бытие. And so these are unbelievable findings, and of course uh, they were he, they took them uh, to Bethlehem, to the city of Bethlehem. Просто невероятные находки они сделали и отвезли это в Вифлеем. Of course, the city where the Messiah was born. Конечно, город там, где родился Мессия. And went to an antiquities dealer, someone that deals with antique items. И они пошли к антиквару. And sold them. И продали эти свитки ему. And then he went to Jerusalem. И затем он уже поехал в Иерусалим. And sold them to two different places. One that was one individual that was the Metropolitan of Jerusalem, or or had a large title in Jerusalem. His name was Samuel. И этот антиквар поехал к одному человеку, который был мэр Иерусалима. His name was actually Arthur Anasias Samuel. It doesn't really matter, but that was his name. Его звали Самуил, но в принципе это так только второй вариант, как он сказал. He bought most of the scrolls for a hundred and ten dollars. И все большинство свитков он купил за четыреста десять долларов. And then, hundred, hundred and ten, сто десять, сто десять долларов. And then Professor E. L. Shuchenik. И такой профессор по такому имени. From the Hebrew University. Из Еврейского университета. 
which was now in Jerusalem. They had a Hebrew university, even though uh, at this time, 1947, it's just before Israel is about to become a nation. И тогда тоже был еврейский университет в Израиле, в Иерусалиме, прямо незадолго до образования Израиля. And there was already a university uh, started there, a Hebrew university of Jewish individuals on, actually, it's on the far end уже, в принципе, тогда еврейский университет существовал, даже когда еще государства не было. Actually, it's on the far end of the Mount of Olives, on a, on a hillside called Mount Scopus. И можно сказать, что с одного холма, с одной стороны Оливковой горы находится. Most people don't realize that 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 far over is also still the Mount of Olives. И большинство людей даже не знают, что эта гора так далеко простирается. Uh, then they call it Mount Scopus. Scopus, is it? Does it mean something? It's just the uh, the t they call it that instead of calling it the Mount of Olives. Ah, it's another name. It is the name of it. It's just the name of an area of the Mount of Olives. It's kind of like. Can I translate Scopus? No? Scopus. No, you don't translate no. it. No. Гора Скопас называется. На принципе это та же ливкова гора. Yeah. Или it's гора преображения, как мы в русском называем. It's kind of like there's different things that are divided up into parts. For example. The Jezreel Valley. Например, допустим, Израильская долина. The Jezreel Valley has many parts: uh, the Haifa Valley, the, the Jordan Valley, Иорданская all долина, the way down there. долина yeah. Хайфа, все эти долины они как внутри. Uh, has many, many different names и as you go down it. Uh, the Bet Shan Valley is part of the Jezreel Valley. Bet Shan. Bet Shan. Bet Shan Dalina. Тоже часть израильской долины. So it has many names all the way down the valley, but the one main name for the entire valley is the Jezreel Valley. Поэтому там множество различных долин с различными названиями, но в принципе все это место в совокупности называется израильская долина. And that's the same thing with the Mount of Olives. It has different names depending on what part of it you're on. То же самое с Оливковой горой, в зависимости от того, с какой стороны вы находитесь. This is very common in Israel. Это достаточно распространено в Израиле. About two years later, they go back to the same cave number one, 1950. Где-то в 50-м году, два года спустя, они возвращаются в ту же самую пещеру. Now Israel's become a nation in 1948, just a few days after these scrolls were sold. В 48-м году за after two days, два дня спустя после того, как были найдены свитки, восстановление Израиля происходит. The United Nations signed the document giving permission for uh, Israel to become a nation just uh, uh, actually uh, one day after the scrolls were purchased. И он подписал документ об образовании Израиля, в принципе, за один день после покупки этих свитков. It's like, okay, 2,000 years has passed. And God is going to like put His stamp on it. Можно сказать, что прошло две тысячи лет, и Бог свою печать поставил. I give you the scrolls, and I give you your country. Я даю вам ваши свитки, я даю вам вашу страну. Both at the same time. Все произошло в то же самое время, в одно и то же время. It's time to return. Время пришло возвратиться. Like the stamp to let us know, okay, now is the time. Как печать, печать, то есть время пришло. And so that's that's what's happening here. They went back to the scroll in 1950. They found 70 fragments. И в 50-м году они возвратились и нашли еще 50 фрагментов. Most of those fragments were from the seven scrolls that they had found over the over the years. И большинство тех фрагментов были принадлежали семи предыдущим свиткам свиткам, которые они нашли за предыдущие года. Now these scrolls were on lambskin. И все эти свитки были написаны на uh, шкуре ягненка. Because any uh, religious scrolls that are found are required to be on, uh, or from the Bible or from the Tanakh, any scrolls that are found from that had to be on lambskin. They cannot be on papyrus. Поскольку все религиозные свитки такое требование предъявлялось, чтобы все они были написаны на овечьей шкуре или шкуре ягненка, но не на не на папирусе. It's like a way of doing it where they they can't to make it's more holy to put it on lambskin than it is to put it on papyrus. То есть можно сказать, это становилось более свят святым, если вы пишете на шкуре, а не на папирусе. 
This is talking about the community house I'm teaching. Я преподаю at Qumran. Я учу о этом этих этом поселении в Кумране. Um, it said uh, the three Bedouin shepherds discovered the eight uh, clay jars. It was actually ten, and different things were talked about here about what they found. Uh, they also found uh, 40 psalms. And, and many, many things did they find. Behind me here, you see this hill of rocks. Right here. This is actually the village of Qumran. В принципе, это это есть деревня Кумран. Where these priests lived. Где жили священники? And we're going to go uh, right over here, right over here in this area. И мы пойдем. I can point to it with the cursor if that'll mm -hmm. work. No, it doesn't let me. Okay, I'll do it this way. Uh, we're going to go right over here. This is the, the beginning of the village, and the, we're going to walk down here and go inside of the village. Можно сказать, то начало деревни. Мы войдем по этой дорожке, пойдем налево и войдем в саму деревню. What is important here is you see how you have this coming down this way. Uh, it's called a wadi. И вы видите этот ущелье такое, по которому спускалась вода. Where, uh, when it rains, water can come down this way. We talked about this before. And so what they've done is they made a way to bring the water in here. When it comes down this wadi instead of it coming down this way. So they made a way to bring the water right in here to the edge of the city. Or the edge, the edge of the small town. The village, I should say. So they bring it. So the water is coming down from here, and the water is coming down from here. When it rains, and they're going to, and it normally it comes down this way. And they're going to change it to make it come in here. So that they can get water to their uh, city, to their village. I'm going to jump forward to something so I can show this and then I'll back up. I want to show you this right quick. Here it is. Okay. They built uh, rock structures like this. And there's a wall here as well. And then they, uh, would, they would cover this with... Uh, a platform of rocks, so this would be a, like an aqueduct. And right now it's not covered, so you can see the bottom of it. And they'd bring, they'd bring the water in. Let's see if I have a better picture. Not on this one. So let me uh, jump back. So what they would do is they bring the water in uh, to these areas, and this is uh, this area walks down here, and there's a, a bathing area down here, a mikvah. And they have an aqueduct. That's what this is. And then uh, there, this is showing you different areas in there, and this is before you go into the area where they lived. About 200 of them. Yeah, is it, is it where they lived? Where they lived, yes. Там они жили, 200 примерно человек. And so this is giving some area, but they uh, they also lived in this area here. Также они жили там. You can't tell, but these had roofs on them. Там были крыши. And then there's another room over this way. Другая комната там. And this whole area would be like a, uh, this would have a covering over it, like a patio area. What kind? Patio area. A patio meaning a, uh, an open place in front of the house with a covering over it so it would be shaded. Mm. Terrasa, like terrasa. Terrasa, okay. They would have that there. And uh, uh, this is a ritual bath. You can see the steps going down. Это ритуальное. Где обмовение совершалось, 
куда ступеньки ведут. So they were very careful of how they brought the water in. Поэтому они очень осторожно, очень аккуратно воду подводили. So you remember when I said they had stones laid over the top of these aqueducts? Помните, как я сказал, они на этом акведуке клали камни. And the water would come through the aqueduct. И вода проходила внутри. And the reason they had the stones over the top of it is so that no one could touch it. Причина, почему они ставили камни, для того, чтобы никто не прикоснулся к воде. Because they they built this village according to the priestly rule. Поскольку они построили эту деревню в соответствии со священническими правилами. So they they were acting just like the priests were supposed to act in Jerusalem. Поэтому они так также все делали, исполняли как и священники в Иерусалиме. And their water had to be pure. И вода должна была быть чистой. Untouched by man. Которая не прикоснулся бы человек. And every two times a day, when they had their meal, they would walk down into one of these areas. И дважды в день до еды они входили в одну из таких таких бань. And wrap the linen linen cloth around them and bathe. И принимали омовение. But what's really important is that they did this before each meal, and Every time it had to be done exactly at the right time, like we discussed before. И как мы сказали, перед каждым до каждого до каждого приема пищи и в определенное время. And they they were very careful in in making sure that everything they did was like the priest wanted them to do it. Like in Jerusalem, they should have been doing it. Очень аккуратно, внимательно они подходили к этому, чтобы все дело так же, как священники в Иерусалиме. Let me give you an example of what they tried to do in Jerusalem and, and were successful. Например, что делали в Иерусалиме, что у них получалось? In Jerusalem, in order to get water to the temple area, в Иерусалиме, чтобы подвести воду к храму, that was pure, чистую воду. A king Herod spent a great deal of time and money to build something that was unbelievable. Царь Ирод провел очень много времени, потратил много денег, чтобы сделать очень большое чудо. There is a a hill that is maybe twenty kilometers on the other side of Bethlehem. На другой стороне двадцати километров от Иерусалима есть один холм. That's a little, just a little bit, like this much higher than the hill in Jerusalem. Можно сказать, что он немножко, может, на два сантиметра выше Иерусалимской горы. That had a spring on it. И на котором находился источник. And so he, Herod, took these large rocks about this tall. И Ирод взял огромные камни такой высоты. That were round. That he had his men cut them. Они были круглые, люди подрезали, придали форму. And they cut a hole in the middle of these round rocks about this big around. И они такого диаметра, радиуса вырезали дырку в этом камне, в этих камнях. And they made a lip around the hole that came out about this far. Lip. A lip around the hole that would stick out. Uh, and then they would put the the next rock to it that was the other way around. So to insert them together, one to the next. They не сделали такие, как можно сказать, зарубки или такие замочки. То есть они вставили один камень в второй и так по цепочке. This is maybe forty-five to fifty kilometers away from Jerusalem. Это в расстоянии сорок пять пятьдесят километров от Иерусалима. Way on the other side of Bethlehem. На другой стороне Вифлеема. And they they could because they were sealed. They put rock against rock. You can imagine how many rocks this took to do it. И поскольку они камень в камень вставляли, так то представь себе сколько камней на это ушло. That they carved out this way. И они каждый камень так вырезали. And they'd put them against each other, and then they would seal them with mortar. With what? Mortar, like what you put in a stone to after you put stone on top of stone to build a building. In between the stone, you put cement or mortar. И с цементом или за маской, с крепящим материалом, они соединяли эти камни. They would seal them up. This. Запечатывали. They they use the same type of material here. This is says cistern here. Здесь говорится это цистерна. It's a cistern down this way. 
в земле. For keeping water. Для, для, для хранения воды. То же самое для акведуков и для цистерн, они скрепляли их раствором. То же с этими акведуками дно, бока, они раствором специально заделывали, чтобы не пропускать воду. This is not nearly as, as unbelievable as what they did in, what uh, Herod did to get water to Jerusalem that was pure. But, well, Herod would bring those round rocks all the way. Now, because they were sealed, uh, the, he could bring them up over the hill because the pressure of the water would bring it up and down. He didn't, ha he didn't have to take it around the mountains and he could just go right over things because they were sealed. The pressure would bring the water in. И поскольку все эти камни были запечатаны uh, герметично, то он мог эту водопровод, так называемый, вести поверх, вниз, по, по холмам, по долинам, через скалы, вверх, вниз. То есть по-любому бы давление бы направляло эту воду, вода бы сама текла. So he could just more or less take a straight path all wherever he wanted to go because the pressure of the water would let him do that. Он мог все делать напрямую, пустить по прямой, а не обходить через горы. And since no one could touch the water all the way from the spring all the way to Jerusalem, it was considered holy water. Поскольку никто все равно не смог бы прикоснуться к этой воде по пути из Вифлеема в Иерусалим, она была святой водой. Because they, they needed a tremendous amount of water to wash all the animals and to wash everything after, they, after the sacrificings of thousands of animals. Так как нужно было очень много воды для жертвоприношений, для мовения животных и все процедуры. In Qumran they weren't doing sacrificing, but what they, they needed water to be able, every day for it to be pure water for them to bathe two times a day. В Кумране же жертвоприношений не было, но дважды в день нужно было умываться. Также Инфешка это такой источник был, колодец недалеко. Uh, whenever they would run out of water from the rain. Когда каждый раз у них заканчивалась вода дождевая, то они на слах привозили воду от того источника. These uh, caves, uh, these these people, these these priestly people, they would put their uh, scrolls in caves, and the, they were called uh, genesis, uh, which meant caves for items that are uh, broken or old and they those areas where you put things like that that's called uh, Genesis like not like the book of the Bible it's spelled different G E N I Z A S but it means the place where you keep you keep things that are um, uh, old and broken or and they would take the scrolls and they ca they call these types of scrolls Genesis scrolls и они хранили такие поломанные свитки, можно сказать, испорченные, различные другие инструменты, материалы, вещи в этих пещерах. И пещер было такое специальное название для хранения этих поломанных вещей. Это картинка тех полок, на которых хранились свитки. Не в пещерах, но в деревне. So these here are little areas, and they would have shelves built in here. А были встроены полки. Where they would store the scrolls. Uh, uh, they didn't store the scrolls in caves unless there was something wrong with the scrolls. А свитки они хранили обычно в деревне, но только если что-то Uh, какое-то повреждение в свитках было, только тогда они в пещеру их отправляли. И обычно они хранили свитки здесь, на полках, чтобы можно было постоянно брать, читать, изучать. Но 
И свитки были святыми, и нужно было много работы для создания свитков. They didn't want to destroy them, so they would put them in these caves called Genesis caves. И свитки они не хотели разрушать, и поэтому помещали в пещеры. And so, but otherwise, they would keep them in these areas, and they you can't tell because remember this is two thousand years old. Ну как вы помните, две тысячи лет насчитывается этому. So you can't tell what it used to look like before, but these are shelves for uh, 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 keeping scrolls. But where they got the picture from? This was from uh, Qumran and Masada, the two areas. That's where the pictures are from. I mean, is it how they know how, how it looked like? How did they know what it looked like? This, this, these are the actual pictures. It was drawn by them, those people. No, no, no. This is actually going there and taking pictures of what is there today. Ah, today. это современные картины, фотографии, как выглядит это там сейчас. In Qumran and Masada. In Qumran and Masada. Yeah, these are two areas that are nearby. Qumran and Masada. Right. To give you an example, and here is what is what you might a picture of what it might have looked like when they um, put the doors on it and and made shelves over this area. Это возможно так это все выглядело, когда Двери там были и полки. Okay, so that's that's what this is here, letting you see that. So they would keep the scrolls in there. So the caves weren't designed to be able to uh, house the scrolls. Поэтому пещеры первоначально не были специально для свиток обустроены. Here are some of the uh, pots right here. Вот это такие кувшины that the scrolls were found in которых были были найдены свитки the type of pots they were found in вот такой такая форма Notice they have lids on them как видите там на этих кувшинах были крышечки крышки для запечатывания and they had a way of uh, pulling using leather to tie down the lids mm? they used leather to tie the lids down tight mm -hmm. и кожу использовали для того чтобы плотно герметично закрывать эти кувшины and uh, moisture could could not get inside of these pots. И поэтому влажность не смогла бы проникнуть внутрь этих кувшинов. This is the uh, hillside of Masada, which we're looking at right here. Это сбоку Масады, что мы видим здесь. And uh, this this black drawn line here Qumran. is to it's, it's is Qumran. Qumran. It's Qumran. Masada. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I said Masada. Thank this is Qumran. And this is taking you down to show you where the caves or the villages up here in this area. That's where we are right right here. In the uh, in the village area up up here. So you, you can walk down where these caves were, where where this where these Genesis caves were. Genesis caves were. Were they uh, keeping uh, scrolls that are old and dilapidated things that where are worn are out? Where, where are they? Down there? this way, right On down the picture. here. And it shows how to get there. Yeah, how to get there from Черный, the village. Черная пунктирная линия показывает, как добираться до этих пещер, где они хранили все испорченные свитки. A little bit of a dangerous walk, but that's where they kept them to keep them safe, so people wouldn't get a hold of them. Это можно сказать небезопасно туда добраться можно. Но по крайней мере люди другие не смогли бы так легко забрать свитки. And uh, uh, there's all kinds of uh, wonderful things that we found out about these people. И другие интересные вещи мы можем узнать об этих людях. The people called themselves, as we talked before, uh, as Yahad was what they called each other. Люди называли себя Yahad. And uh, one of the documents that was theirs was called the Damascus document. Один из документов, который был найден, называется Дамаск. And the Thanksgiving scroll. И свиток Дамаска, свиток благодарения. Also known as the rule of the community. Также известный как правила общины. Now they, they, this people that we're talking about that you read about that are called the Essenes. И эти люди, о которых вы слышали об Эссеях. You may have heard about these people. Well, people today have said that all eleven caves came from uh, the Essenes. 
И, возможно, вы слышали, что люди также говорят, и все, все 11, 11 этих пещер, там были найдены свитки от эсеев. But what we've discovered today is something very new that people do not know today. So if you're reading in a book, you, you won't find this. Но то, что мы буквально недавно нашли, обнаружили, и вы не сможете найти это в книжке, в современных книжках каких-то, поскольку этого еще не все знают. This Essen community uh, was keeping the uh, the old and used uh, caves in four and five old and used scrolls in caves four and five in this Yachad community. They, they kept scrolls in caves four and five that were Genesis scrolls. Cave it, number four and five. It belongs to Essenes, but not it, to, to Qumran. Essenes, to not, Essen. not to Qumran people. The Qumran people are the Essenes people. Qumranский народ это Эсеи, они хранили свитки четвертой пятой пещере. Well, what people don't generally understand is that there were more than one type of people at Qumran. Что было больше групп в Кумране жило там. The Yahad people. Люди под именем Yahad. They stored things when they were trying to protect them from the Romans coming down. Сохраняли свои свитки, когда римляне приходили. In caves one and caves four of Qumran. Сохраняли в пещерах первой и четвертой. And that's why you found these uh, unbelievable things in caves one and four. Поэтому такие были найдены интересные очень вещи в первой, четвертой пещерах. But there were other communities that had lived in Qumran at different time frames too, at different times. Но также в различные периоды времени жили там и другие группы, другие общности. Over about a two hundred year period of when this village was settled. Общины за период двухсот лет с тех пор как была основана эта деревня. Uh, there, it's very important to understand that there were more communities in Qumran and different beliefs in each community. И очень важно понять, что различные общины жили в Кумране, у каждой из общин были различные верования. But what we really want to pin in on and understand is what is this group Yahad teaching, because they're so like what we believe today as Messianic believers. И очень важно понять, чему учит эта группа Яхад. Нам нужно это понять, поскольку очень их вера, верования подобны нашим. But if you go out and you you get a book from the Hebrew University today or from any any bookstore. Если вы найдете какую-то книгу из еврейского университета или магазина, это вы там прочтете, что во всех одиннадцатых пещерах люди, все, это был один и тот же народ, который хранил там свитки. Because there's been so little written about the new findings that there are lots of communities coming out of Qumran. Поскольку очень мало известно о различных общинах, которые жили в Кумране. And so, for our purposes, to study only one group is very important, the Yahad group. И для нас важно изучить только одну группу, которая называлась Yahad. Caves one and caves four. Это пещеры один и четыре. Where when they were fleeing from Rome, from the Romans coming down just before 70 A.D. И когда они убегали из от римлян в 70 году. They use caves one and four to hide their precious things. Took them out of the scrollery. Yeah, в четвертой первой четвертой пещерах они сохняли самое ценное. Out of the shelves here in the village of Qumran. Они забрали из своего хранилища свитков Qumrani и спрятали это. And hid them in the caves. One and four, precious, precious scrolls, not not broken and old scrolls. Драгоценные, ценные свитки, не разрушенные и не какие-то ущербные. We'll finish this up in a little bit later, and we'll stop right now.